Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about PayPal's futile attempt of trying to uh, convey to the masses that you need to capitulate or else we will take $2,500 from your account. Um, we're going to listen to Fox News contributors speak about this, and then we're going to come back and I will give you my perspective from a software engineer perspective. And while I 100% do not think that this was a slip up and contrary to what Biden administration thinks, black people do know how to use computers. There are black programmers out there. So without further ado, let's watch the show. Welcome back to the Big Sunday Show. Will there be any payback for PayPal? The digital payment system put out a policy that would allow them to find users for misinformation. Social media exploded, even former PayPal execs. Former PayPal president David Marcus tweeting in part, quote, a private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. And Elon Musk, who co-founded PayPal, replied, agreed. After the backlash, PayPal said the policy was posted, quote, in error. Earlier on Sunday Morning Futures, Arizona Senate candidate Blake Masters, Arizona. who received large donations from PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, sounded off. We need to uh, ban companies at that level, at that size, especially if they're touching banking or if they're in social media. We're going to ban these companies from discriminating against users because of the political content of their speech. That's how we treat the phone company, right? Verizon can't go and listen to you and I have a telephone conversation and say, ooh, that's too conservative. You can't let a non-bank lender at the size of PayPal just discriminate against people and decide what's misinformation and find them. All right, well, here we go again. Um, Gianno, take a listen to what a corporate affairs director from PayPal had to say about this uh, whenever this came up. They said PayPal is not fining people for misinformation, and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. Our teams are working to correct our policy pages. We're sorry for the confusion this has caused. They say this is just a big fuss up, a mistake. <laughs> Do you buy that? All lies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, sincerely. So they originally said we're gonna fine users $2,500 for misinformation. <laughs> then they put out misinformation. So who's gonna find them is the real question. You know, it, this makes me think, do we even live in a free country anymore? You're really going to be the arbiter of truth? You're gonna look at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or any published writing and say that you're gonna find us? I don't believe it, not one bit, that that's the truth. And I'm thinking about an individual who recently was banned from PayPal. He's a, a bio, evolutionary biologist and writer, and he said that there's only two sexes, male and women, man and woman. And from that point, he was banned. They held his money for 180 days. And there's been other people who have been deplatformed, de excuse me, from PayPal. So this is a trend. We're seeing this in Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And now over to PayPal, which is a real nasty consideration for a lot of Americans who have money there and they don't know what they may do next. I mean, Jackie, when they tie up your money, it, it's a big concern for people, but to Gianna's point, this isn't the first time we have seen big tech interfere, especially when it comes to money. I think back to Canada not too long ago. Yeah, I oh thought exactly gosh. the same thing when GoFundMe um, wanted to suspend millions of dollars in donations that were made to help the Canadian truckers who were protesting uh, vaccine mandates. Yeah. This is what happens with big tech and social media in general. It's one thing if you want to say, well, I'm going to suspend your Twitter account. Okay, well, we can have a free speech conversation. Now you're putting money in the mix here and there's a financial penalty too. It's outrageous. Um, and, and all these companies say the same thing. Well, if you violate our policies, the policies aren't really clear. They're ambiguous. People don't exactly know what they mean, and they can twist them and bend them right. to fit their own narrative, whatever that is. The, the thing that I say about... So the, okay, so now when I, um, I wanted to talk about both of the, the, the GoFundMe um, and their fuel also in their futile attempt to try to um, get the masses to comply, to capitulate to whatever behaviors the government seen, um, deemed fit for their citizens to behave or act in or in such a manner. Um, these companies don't understand that, hey, I know the people who work for you might be socialist, communist dipships, but you live in capitalist societies. And when you do crazy things like this, 
Hmm. Well, it breeds competition. And if you don't think that you will become another MySpace or a Yahoo of the world, guess again, people do not like to be told what to do. And when you, uh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, doesn't this violate, I think it might be your fourth amendment. Um, it might be for you, uh, be securing your own papers, which also includes money, your own money that you work for. Um, um, how dare have in the, in the great Greta Thunberg and the great words of Greta Thunberg, how dare you, how dare you think that you have the audacity to think that you can take people's money simply because they disagree with whatever you have to say. And you know, this isn't for me, this will have, this right here was the last straw for PayPal. I don't know about many of you, but I've heard when it comes, when it came to a few conservative voices, their accounts being banned, um, their accounts being held. And if anyone's ever have ever, um, um, watched black conservative perspective, he did, did a video on, the creator who is a black man who had developed the black ripper universe and it's a comic book and um people had already given him well over a million dollars um for his pre-release and he needed that money to in order to basically make the copies or make the printouts of his comic books to give to um, the individuals who purchased it and paypal was literally holding his money hostage um, these companies should not be able to break any constitution. You are not above the constitution just because you are a private company. You are only allowed to be a private com a company because of the constitution and because of our laws that we have here. This does not make you above the law. And honestly, like last night, I could, well, actually yesterday, I try as soon as I heard this, I tried to unlink my bank account and that right there scared the hell out of me. And I know I had some debts to settle with PayPal because I was doing on like payments for certain things or breaking down my payments in four. So I paid that off immediately and then, um, unlinked my bank account and then call, I had to call in. That's, that's another thing, you know, their system must've been bogged down because I had to actually call in to close my accounts. Once I unlinked my accounts, I couldn't manually do it through the, um, the, the website. And to be honest, I think it's because they wanted to talk to me. They wanted to ask person, um, ask me specifically why I am going, why I wanted to delete my account. You can try to talk to me all you want. But the trust is gone. The trust that you we've given PayPal and, and for some reason, these big companies don't understand the people who made you will be the people who bankrupt you. Okay. You do not do this to anyone and think that you're going to get away with it. You forgot. Like I said, we live in a capitalist society. And then from the per, from when I look at this from this um, perspective of a software developer, okay, look, I've worked at three other companies. I've been, um, a, my more expertise was more in, so into embedded stuff, but I did dabble into the web, um, in which we had to do HTTP requests using the API, you know, get post all that great stuff, um, get fetch and post all that great stuff. And here, here is how the system works. When you make an HTTP request to go get this user agreement, the API or however your middleware is, um, set up, it goes and retrieves your page. Um, from a database and then displays that page. It takes time to come back. Now, when you are updating code into the master branch, when it gets emerged, because that's usually the master is usually what goes on into development, uh, well, not development, but into production. Okay. Your master branch is usually, um, um, you have branches out, you do your work on branches other than the master branch, obviously. Um, once you get your code peer reviewed, and this can be in the form of, you know, any language that you want, but it can also be documentation MD dot MD files, um, and your files in some weird markup language that makes it re readable, um, to the human eye. But instead of you wanting to display a PDF, you can fetch your data in the form of words and put it up as a CP, um, a, a, into an HTML format. So I know, I know in order for this to be uh, merged into the master, not only did you have to have a manager approve on this, and this is after it goes to the lawyers. Okay. 
Um, not only did you have to have a manager or your product manager approve it, you had to have it peer reviewed. So unless this is incompetence at the highest level, this was not done. Um, this was not done unintentionally. This was done on purpose. So <laughs> don't sit here and try to tell you guys think Americans are so dumb. And with the fact that so many Americans are more tech savvy, you would think that I, you would think that these tech companies would, you know, maybe make a wild guess that maybe their base isn't as illiterate or computer illiterate as they thought they were, they once were, and, um, could possibly figure this out themselves. <laughs> the fact that you think that we're too stupid enough to not know that this was done intentionally, it speaks of volumes on not only your character as a company, but your future potential. Who knows if this way it might pop up the next time you just got mad because you got caught. And now you're going to suffer. And the people who are going to suffer the most are those um, at the bottom of the pay at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to PayPal, not those higher ups that made this made this decision. So if I were you and you're working at PayPal, I'm most, I will most definitely um, find employment somewhere else. I would want I would not even want to be linked to this company. Right now, it's an embarrassment to say you even work for PayPal because now PayPal is just you, you're verging on like a company that you would find in China or Vietnam or Cuba somewhere. So, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, who knows what's was in the future for PayPal, but their competitors, oh, I'm pretty sure so many people are moving over to their competitors and these websites that were taking PayPal, they probably will start taking other forms of um, payment um, platforms and putting them, or at least adding their API um, onto their website so people can have multiple choices um, to use different platforms other than PayPal to um, make their payments. So PayPal, you just screwed yourself thinking that you were big bad and that this administration, this liberal administration will let you get away with this. So thank you for tuning in. That was just my, my take on this. And if you haven't already, please delete your accounts and um, have a good night. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye.